Alison, who is Marion? Marion is a Polish-born artist who uh, survived the Second World War and who renamed himself. He was born Pinkus Burstein and he renamed himself when he moved to Paris in 1950 because he did not want to live under the name that the Nazis had imprisoned him under. And he is an artist who sort of fell outside of art history. He's a very important artist, but he's someone who didn't make it into the first draft of the 20th century. So this exhibition is all about trying to reinsert him into the canon and explore the complexity of his unique art practice. But why is he so unknown after all? Because one can see he was kind of genius sometime. I think that his practice, first of all, he was never part of a movement. He was a figurative artist at a moment where abstraction became ascendant. He uh, did not have a group that could sort of keep his work alive because he died in 1977 at, at age 50, even though he was very prolific. Um, I think the fact that he also, his figuration was very misunderstood because he didn't necessarily make his backstory part of the work. So I think it took many years and a lot of, um, you know, retrospective uh, looking to understand what this practice means and why it's so important. And, but there's some uh, common point with Guston, for example. Exactly. I mean, I think that in the same way that Guston, when he changed his practice into a very figurative, a very cartoony, kind of figuration, there was a very violent reaction against it. And Marion was a kind of an outlier. I mean, his when he moved to the US in 1962, he uh, was part of the Alan Frumkin Gallery, which was itself a bit of an oddball group of artists, H.C. Uh, Westerman, June Leaf, um, weird figuration, a lot of artists from Chicago. Um, and Marion was, he fit in there, but he, he wasn't really part of the zeitgeist. And it's interesting that today, because there is this strong return to figuration and a kind of primacy of painting, that Marion's work takes on this, you know, timeliness. And he's always vomiting, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, the mouth is obviously one of the expressive sights. And in the exhibition, there are a, there's a slideshow as well as a film that Marion made in which he gives a testimonial of what happened to him in Poland, um, in the camps. And he writes about how, you know, his traumatic reaction was to vomit. But I think it's not so literal here because in a way they look like candy canes. There's this kind of life really? force. Yeah, and he actually talks about it in the film. He says um, something about frozen blood looking like candy canes. And so there's, you know, I don't think we can have a literal interpretation of this, but to me, like in this room, which is a, an approximative um, remaking of his studio at the Chelsea Hotel in the 70s, it's almost like all of the, the faces are connected through this life force that is either coming into or going out of his mouth of all of these fictional personages, which is what he called all of his paintings. It's interesting to think that he, he met all the crowd at the Chelsea Hotel in the 70s, right? Yes, he lived on the same floor for a while with Patti Smith. Yeah. On the 10th floor. And, and, and Maple Top, so. Yes, and um, Viva lived a few floors below him. Michel Oder knew him. I actually interviewed Michel. Um, and he, he really found a community there amongst this kind of transgressive, bohemian, punk kind of moment of the 70s. And I met a woman who still lives there, um, who was one of his best friends there. And she told me that he really found home there and that's the place where he made his most radical work and this film that I spoke about. Mm, but he's very far from the pop clean version of painting. Yeah, it's almost like trauma pop. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. That's an in in interesting new concept, huh? yes. trauma pop. Yes, yes. I mean, I think it's, it's more serious than that, but it's also 
Again, it's not this literal, you know, it's a personage, it's an invention, but it's he's not also, himself. It's well, he's there are veiled portraits of him here in the exhibition, but um, it's never explicit. There's only one portrait that's like a very explicit uh, portrait of him from the 50s. Because most of the victim of la, the Shoah, if they were able to survive, they were not able to speak, right? Yes. I think that also the fact that the mouth is a sight, I mean, this is a bit of an armchair psychoanalysis, but the fact that the mouth is such an important site for his figures is because it's beyond speech. I mean, that's why he couldn't articulate. And it's interesting that he made these important drawings when he had his first nervous breakdown in 70, 71, because he was unable to speak. And his doctor said, well, make drawings. And that really is like the Rosetta Stone for understanding the work. And those notebooks are in the collection of the Central Pompidou. Mm. Merci. De rien.